Is this working? Yes. Well, thank you all for coming and waiting through the rain. I guess this is going to be our infrastructure meeting because I'll be talking a little bit about that, and I guess Trump talked about it this afternoon, so everybody can go to sleep. All right, so what I'm going to do is go over a few things. But first, before I begin, I have a couple of questions. Mark alluded to the fact that we have a Comcast relationship with the cyber communications, and we do. So we want to thank you all for alerting us to the fact that maybe some of the installs weren't as clean and neat as they needed to be because you're still dealing with the utility, which means they do it their way until you stop them in the bud and you tell them they're not going to do it their way. So thank you for that. So effectively what happened is Mark now has a friend in the supervisor and they will be coordinating the infrastructure build out to a much more significant degree than Comcast ever imagined they were going to have to do. Now, those of you who've been here for eight years, remember my committee and I did the same thing with AT&T. They were not too happy with this, but it worked. And let me introduce two other new members of our team. Sam Benmayer and Larry Lipner have joined the team. Larry is really coordinating a lot of the Comcast issues with Mark Sherman, and Sam, along with her POTUS from the Security Committee, is spending a lot of time looking at some video and security options for both the clubhouse and the guard gate in a combined effort, in addition to their work with the Technology and Cable Committee. So that's background. Now I need one favor. Does anybody currently have, at Valencia Falls, a Comcast service that they are paying for? One. We know Joe. Okay. The reason I ask is, Comcast is going to try to do as little digging and ripping up the community as possible, and they're going to pull all the existing conduit, sorry, they're going to pull all the existing coax that's in the ground out of the existing conduit that is currently in and around the community that was put in 18 years ago before any of us bought a house here. The reason I ask about this is we, believe it or not, have eight people that still have some remnant Comcast service which means if we yank all the coax cable out of the ground, they might lose some service. So if any of your friends you know have Comcast service, please tell them to contact Mark Sherman, ASAP, because when we do the build out, if they don't tell us who they are, they're gonna lose their services. Email's been done three times. In a serious way, this is an infrastructure, and thank you for coming. This is our Comcast monthly update. I'm going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Please hold all your questions till the end. Uh, primary contact, again, is Larry Lipner and Mark Sherman. So when we're done with this, as you all know, we also publish monthly, if not sooner, uh, information on Comcast. I'm going to summarize the end of my presentation at the front. If you ever want to know anything that the Cable Committee has done, Please just go online to Valencia Falls under announcements, under cable committee, and you will see all the announcements that we put out are stored there. So if you forget what the, Sam put out a great little link on how to find out what the channels are, you can get it. I'm going to show you at the end. All right. Right now, because of the infrastructure build out with Comcast, I did something I hadn't done in eight years before AT&T. I actually drove by my bike, which I guess is riding my bike around each and every pot. And I started to look at stuff that no normal human should look at, other than the fish kill. I started to look at infrastructure build-out. Where is FPNL and their boxes? Where are AT&T and their towers? Where is the existing Comcast pedestals? How are they related to one house versus the other? It was an eye-opening education, and I'm going to share it with you now, so stay awake.
as you go through the community, these is existing. This has nothing to do with replacements. This is what our community looks like now. And for 16 years, we have lived here, some of us. Less than 10% of us have ever landscaped any of these appliances from the utility company. The utility company has put all their appliances inside what's called a utility easement. A utility easement is different than a property easement. Sometimes they're near each other, sometimes they're not. But the utility easement allows the utility to put their boxes, quote unquote, pedestals, so that they can deliver services to us. We have three main utilities, FPNL, AT&T, and Comcast. So, without further ado, you'll see that we have a FPNL pole next to a crummy looking Comcast tower. That, by the way, is sitting on a current lawn right now, which is a big electrical box next to a FPNL tower. This is a very nicely straight up box, currently on somebody's lawn, and the thing in front of it is the water meter. But you'll see where it is in relationship to the sidewalk, and it's very indicative of whether you own a signature house, a brown house, or a regal house, because geographically, the position of the appliances look very different, but structurally, they're almost in the same spot. But because of the size of the yard, whether you have a driveway next to each other or you have two side yards next to each other, visually, it's very different. And it's ridiculous that I have this knowledge now. <laughs> Here is a little landscaping job of the Comcast. At, on the left is the Comcast, and on the right is the cylinder is AT&T. And you can see that the person got smart and tried to hide it under a tree. Here are our friends at the Leaning Towers of Pisa. Again, this is what we currently have. Again, our friends are shading under a tree, side by side. Ah, probably none of you have noticed these in the community. My community has two of them. Every circle has at least one or two major redistribution boxes that I'll bet you no one even knows exist because they fade into the background. The only reason I know about this is because I rode around every circle and started taking pictures. And there's one right next to the driveway because of the way the easement went and the way the driveway was built. That person has about a three inch barrier before he knocks over the Comcast. <laughs> and that person has the same spot but they put a little ugly plant next to it. <laughs> and there again we have a large electrical box and look what's hiding behind it. Our friend, Mr. Comcast. But look how close it is to the middle of the potential yard, but that's right in the utility. And that is a, you can tell by the box, this is a signature house. You'll notice that they have a, they have a, their driveways are, op are opposite, so you have a little bigger thing, but you'll see that the Comcast thing is dead center in the middle of the utility easement between the two homes. Here we have our big friend boxes. We have a big Comcast box and a big electrical box. What you're laughing at is true. None of you probably know this exists, but this is what is now. This has nothing to do with the Comcast we built. This is what the community looks like right now. <laughs> there again is another one of our big box friends, but that one's a little bit landscape. It almost looks like Sid's truck to me, one of them is. And there's another one. You'll see how it sits dead center in the middle of the utility easement between the two homes. You're going to see a pattern pretty soon. You see how in front of the uh, sidewalk? If you have a sidewalk home, the utilities appliances look further back in your yard. Because of the distance. See, this home is a signature home, and it does not have a sidewalk. Because it doesn't have a sidewalk, it doesn't have a buffer zone. So when they put the utility easement, you see that it looks like it has less of a yard. Now, this happens to be one of the new boxes. But I just want to show it to you for position. It's exactly what all the other ones are, but it looks better and it's sturdier. That's a new one too. I don't want to get into these. Ah, I only got two gold. And I'll come back to this. Ah. Again, you see the side yard, how this is a little split like a V, and you'll see the utility boxes are in the middle again. Here's our frames. That's a nice landscaping job of a Comcast box and an electrical box. Now this poor guy, look, he has no room on And again, look at the driveway. Unfortunately, the utility design 
put this box, a very large box, next to this guy's yard. And there is one right in the middle of a utility easement. Now this looks interesting because the house to the right, this is their utility side. There's no driveway. The driveways are on opposite side, the right side and the left side. So you have a bigger center yard. This is a Crown Series house, which has a bigger yard. But that box is right dead center in the middle of the utility easement between the two side yards. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> Again, you'll see the B, and they're in the middle. I'm trying to show you consistency. They're all, now this is a, this is not all harm, right? These are two crown houses. You'll see that the driveways are on the opposite side of each other. They have a big center yard that touches each other. They have slightly a V-shaped lot, which the crown some of them do. And you'll see that the utility easement, where the Comcast current box is, is dead center in the middle of that utility easement. This one's closer to the driveway. You can, this must be, this must be, this must be better. Because I can see the, uh, what you call it? Clubhouse in the back. And you can see this one standing in. Now this one's heavily landscaped. But again, it's the same thing as the several pictures before that I showed you. What is it? It's a driveway on the right, a driveway on the left, two common yards in the middle, and what is dead center in the middle of the utility easement? A utility appliance. Heaven forbid. Same thing. I'm going to go through these quick now. Same concept. See your side yard on the right? It's turned. So if you look at it, it looks like a different issue, but again, the utility easement has an electrical box, a pole, and a Comcast box. And look what this is on. We're back here. This is double picture. Now, this faces the tennis courts. This particular house has a driveway on the right. The house on the left, it's a Crown Series, has a driveway on the left. It has a, drive, it has a sidewalk in the front. So the yard is bigger. Look where the box is. It is dead center in the middle of the common utility easement between the two homes. Now here's a classic case of a central easement between two homes which has access to the canal or the lake in the back. Notice this is an easement and look where the Comcast box is. Is it landscape? No. Has anybody bitched about it in 16 years? No. <laughs> and here's our friends. They did something smart. They hedged around the big electrical box, but they left the front open. And you'll see that the box that's new to the right is squattier, stronger, smaller in height, a little fatter in size, but it's on a flat pedestal base. And then next to the flat pedestal base is the top tower. And the reason is that these particular towers are going to redistribute services to the houses. Now, let me explain something. Oh, I'm done. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. You see this box here? Just one second. See this box? This is a typical Comcast box. Every other house has a Comcast box. There are over 350 individual Comcast boxes in the community. These are the existing boxes. This is what exists today. Most of them more look like this in your yard. Most of them are sitting more like this rather than in the middle of an easement. So there are 350 plus of these old, crummy looking Comcast boxes. Guess what's going to happen when we're done? Every one of those boxes is being taken out and thrown away. Every one of those boxes is gone. Gone. Now, what goes in his place? Good question. Oops, I'll put this over the other way. What goes in his place? Oops. Our little buddy. But it's not going to be a one for one replacement. Instead of having 350 individual Comcast boxes, we're going to have under 200. Because each one of these boxes supplies services to four homes, whereas the old original crappy Comcast boxes served two homes. Now, can I guarantee you that this box 
will be exactly replacing that box? No, because this is a one to two math. And this is a one to four math. So some of us who had boxes next to us may no longer have a box. So that will be gone, because it's one to four. So when you walk around Vedra, now for example, this particular box may not exist in the new rebuild. Because when they put one to four houses, you don't know where the new box is going to go, but it's going to go pretty close to where one of the older boxes was, or if they didn't have a box and it was the other side easement, they're going to go to the other side easement. So this is what I wanted to show you, that this is what is. And I'll bet you no one in their right mind other than me has gone around and looked at the stupidity of this. That's why we have you. That's why you have me. But it makes a difference. The Crown series are more variable because we were given the option of left side, right side driveways. Some of us on swerve. Some of us turned our houses. That changes the geometry, aka the look and feel of the house from the street. All of you who live in signature houses have a slightly different issue. Are you with a house with a sidewalk? Are you a house with not a sidewalk? The houses with the sidewalk have a different look from the street when you look at their front lawns, and the houses without a sidewalk have a whole different look because they don't have a sidewalk and a buffer to the street. The Regal series, the Z series, have an almost uniform look because most of the houses didn't have as much land maneuverability so from house to house to house, the placement of any utility is pretty consistent. So, with that in mind, I'm going to come back to any questions you have. Oops. So anyway, this. See the, see the pine? See how flat they are into the ground? That's rock solid. It's built in. And then they have a pedestal tower. And the pedestal tower, somebody asked me the question, it was a brilliant question. I think she was a software engineer. She said, oh, why don't they put them all in the ground? Well, we know what happens in Florida. We have wet ground, you can't repair things. So all the coax, all the fiber is coming in conduit. The fiber will come underneath the ground, and then it goes up into the tower, protected from the water. Then it goes back down into a conduit in the ground to four people's houses. And then it's going to be conduit to your home. So we don't, so it, those of you who are engineers know that it takes a while to lay out a plan. They lay out a plan. But we inherited the infrastructure 18 years ago when GL put the house. So a utility easement is a utility easement. It ain't moving, folks. It is where it is. We do have some variability, we meaning the Cypress people. But that variability is within that chosen utility zone. Herb tells me there's about a 10 foot zone in the utility easement. I'm not enough of an expert, but it might be an inch off here, it might be a foot off there, but it's in the utility. So let me do one other thing, which I get asked all the time, and Larry put this out a while ago. Now, what are our bulk services? Now that we know how they're being delivered, what are they? Well, we are getting from the video conferencing point, sorry, from the video supply point of view, their most current X1 platform, which is their most high-end platform. We're getting their premier HD digital package that includes every channel that they offer that is not super premium. You're not getting epics. You're not getting MLB innings, and you're not getting, as I said before, Rizetti. You're not getting the Playboy channel. <laughs> but it's only $9.95 for the first six months. So you're getting all of that included in the video package. You're getting a high-def DVR that will record. How many of you can record three shows now? How many of you can record two? Now you're going to get six. And you're going to get six, and it's called an any room DVR. That's also one TV. Yeah. We, had this, we had this question a zillion times, so I'm going to cover it. A box covers one TV. So the DVR service is one TV. Then we're having two additional set-top boxes, which are about 
a third the size of the current U-verse box. And that is what they call an any room. Same thing we have with U-verse. You can record it, watch it in the room, start and stop. Then we're gonna have a fourth box, which is called the digital adapter. Many of us just have a spare room or outside. You'll get about 75 high def channels on that. You won't get Showtime, you won't get HBO, but you'll get about 80 channels, more than enough for a spare room or a back bedroom. And if you want an additional box, you can buy it. I do not know what the current retail price is. Larry, you have any idea? I'm guessing 12 bucks, but we'll know in January. So if you need a fourth box, you pay for it at the current retail price. The nice thing about the new X1 Plus. All right. The nice thing about the new X1 platform is that they have a remote app. So like on my iPad, any service that Comcast offers, I could be watching on the airplane, in my backyard, out on the porch, cutting the yard, which I don't do. So any of those you can take with you, and they're great. And I did put this in there for a reason. Not everything all the time will be usable on your mobile device. Let's say there's... Let's say 90% of the offerings you're going to look at at any point in time on your mobile device anywhere. And I know all of you came kicking and screaming to when we put the wireless in your houses. Why did we do that? You guys are nuts. Why are you making me pay for a wireless internet service in my house? And those of you who were here nine years ago remember this argument. Now if I try to take it away from you, I'd get lynched. So what's going to happen next? Internet is going up about six times faster than what you have now. You're going to be going to a 75 meg download speed and a 10 meg upload speed. That is significant because when you upload at 10 megs as opposed to 1.5 we have, your ability to upload photos, your ability to get information up to the website to then be able to pull it down is that much faster. And Mr. Littner, I know, is already fading at the breath. He's already planning on upgrading to the one gig service for 250 bucks a month because he wants to have the fastest service in the community. So nobody else can get one gig service except Sam and Larry because they have to have a competition of whose machines are faster. And I am not upgrading mine because I am not going to be in this competition. And then if you do want, you can upgrade right now. We will probably, I know I'm on recording, Comcast does this about every, now you remember it's about every 14 months? I think it's about every 14 months they upgrade for free their existing level of service. So their blast level of service is <laughs> right now is... It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> their blast level of service is 75 and 10. By the time we cut over, it's probably going to be 100 down and 10 up. So that's a hell of a deal. And then for a year and a half from now, it goes to 150, you get it for free. You just have to turn off your gateway and reboot. But right now, the cost differential is about $25 to go from 75 to 150. <clears throat> I don't think anybody needs it except Larry and Sam, so they've already put in their work. <laughs> you get a wireless gateway, you all know what that is. I don't need to explain that. And I've been asked a dozen times, you get Norton Internet Security for all your computers. Built in. Phones, unlimited phone service, you can call Hong Kong, China, Mexico. You have to go online and look, because I didn't remember where some of the free countries are. But basically, it is a free, unlimited phone with all the features that UVerse currently has now. And in addition, it works with the alarm just like UVerse. So those of us that have Vonage, those of us that have other phone services will be getting a free landline, quote unquote, for free, and it'll tie into your um, alarm system. So those of you that have GSM wireless or other backups, if you want to pay the 30 or $40 a month to keep them as a backup, you have it. If you don't want to and you want to get rid of them and you don't give a crap about your landline, but you just want to have a security system, well, you've got your security phone built in and most of us use our cell phones 90% of the time anyway. Except for Carolina. Oh, this is important. Can anybody see this one? Second from the bottom. A lot of people do not understand the English. Porting is a word that says, I've had my phone number for 20 years. I've had five different carriers. Every time I switch a phone service, I quote unquote port my phone number, aka transfer it, to the new carrier. 
So how many of you have U-verse phones? How many of you have other than a U-verse phone? Right. I have Vonage, we have U-verse. Vonage and U-verse constitute about 92% of the phones in this community. You, when the time comes and you set up your individual install, they'll ask you, do you want a new phone number? Which a couple of people have said yes by mistake. And then most of us will say no, port my number. So now you know what port means, so don't get confused. It's not a warning. It's a transfer. With that, um, Eddie, what did I forget? Sam, what did I forget? Larry, what did I forget? What did I forget to talk about? Ah, Buzz asked the question, are they on schedule? Yes, thanks to Mark and Larry, we had a come to Jesus meeting, am I allowed to say that? We had a come to Jesus meeting with the supervisor, who was told under no uncertain terms that he just cannot run ramshot over the community. As I said, I thank you all at the beginning for telling us that. And just like with AT&T, there will be some digging, there will be some trenching, there will be some boring underground. It's a very complicated install. The engineers will tell you they're going to go underground some streets. They're going to go around the corner of others because they have a major distribution of fibers that they have to get to each and every house. It's not just linear. They don't just start at the clubhouse and send wires like a spider around. They dig, they under, they interconnect. So they are on schedule, and that's why the first question I asked at the beginning, does anybody have a Comcast service, is important because we will speed up and lessen the digging if we can have all the coax cable pulled out of the ground and all the fiber put back in that same conduit. But if we have to dig and bore like we did with AT&T, it's going to be a little bit more of a mess. So, with that, Karen, 10 minutes of questions, Max? Sure. Questions? Board member first. I'll repeat the questions, so do not worry about it. How do you plan to inform the community of what you inform this group regarding the last topic you spoke about, people that have Comcast service and advising powers that be that they in fact have Comcast service? Well, it's a great question. One, we sent out three emails. Two, we have talked to Comcast and we are going to get those nine names and Mark and Alex are going to go knock on their doors and tell them that we need their help. So if any of you know who they are, we will resend out that email, but it's proven to be less than valuable. But that's what we will do. Also, since you brought it up, how many of you have propane tanks? You two are no doubt. Anybody else? Make sure, make sure if you have any friends that have propane tanks, you call Mark Sherman. Why? They're going to be digging in everybody's yard to connect new fiber to the wall. They need to know exactly where the torpedo, called the propane tank, sits. And they need to know where each of the gas lines are that feed whatever you've chosen to have fed. So that's why, to answer your question, it's very important that we do that. Next question. Dick. You said that some houses can have one box that serves four houses, right? No. No, I said. What's the question? Almost every house will be serviced by one box, and a box will typically service four houses. Okay. Well, people who know which box they're connected to? Not relevant. The question is, do they know what box they're connected to? You can count. If you go in your thing, like the first house may have two, the next one four. So, so um, the man in the boxes is going to decide whether he has flowers on the box. It's utility easement, and I guess technically it's on somebody's yard, but it's technically... So I recommend, 17 years later, we've had less than 10% people who landscaped it, but if you want to put a couple of shrubs around it, and Ann will tell you, feel free, but do not do it until after your house is installed. Now, if you have a problem, and you do what a couple of people did, is they tried to bury the tower underneath flowers, and you call in and have a problem, guess what's happening to those flowers? They're being ripped up and thrown away, and guess who's responsible for it? Not the utility company, but you, because technically you're not allowed to impede their access to their appliances. But feel free, as you saw a couple of my pictures, to do a couple little simple landscaping things. It does make sense. But 17 years later, 10% of the community chose to landscape it, so it's interesting to me that now it's a question. 
right. Who's responsible to connect the uh, Comcast to the alarm panel? Who's, who's responsible for connecting the Comcast to the alarm panel? Jack, I'm sure he doesn't know the answer to this because he's in the business so I'll tell him. Comcast. Part of their install will be to make sure that you have wireless internet in your house, that the internet works, the TV works, your remote control works, and that your alarm panel works if it worked before they got there. <laughs> if it ain't working, it's not their job to fix it. Good question. Next. What happens if you have two phone numbers? What happens if you have two phone numbers? You can add, you can ask for an additional line from Comcast. I don't know the price, but I'm guessing it's 15 bucks if you get a simple line. Now, People have asked this question, and it's a great question. What about the AT&T towers that are still there? Are they going away? Since Comcast has taken away all their old towers and getting away the 350 boxes, and they're going to replace them with the 180 boxes. No, AT&T right now is leaving all the towers. Why? Because if you wanted a second phone line, you have every right to have an AT&T phone coming into your house. So as part of the original GL infrastructure build, they, every utility was brought in here so that people could have a choice. So unfortunately, but we will ask, because it's a great question, Larry, well, remember this one. We, were, we are going to ask AT&T, which we never thought about doing, is there, is there an opportunity to, let's just say, clean up their towers? So we're going to ask them that. My first gut sense is there's nothing we can do about it, but it's worth asking. What about the set of boxes? Last what? time you said they don't have them. I don't think you're asking the right question. Try it again. He's asking about set-top boxes. set bottom boxes. Boxes for TVs. I, you mean wireless boxes? Yes. Okay. Wireless. Okay. That's what I thought. Right now, the question was, do, you have, do they have set-top boxes? Yes, they have plenty of set-top boxes. The real question is, do they have wireless set-top boxes? Supposedly, they're in testing now. They're not, they didn't have them as quickly as AT&T had them. We expect them third quarter to fourth quarter of this year. Personally, I expect them first quarter of next year. So yes, they're on the horizon, but if you ask me the question, can I show you one now? Comcast will tell you no, they're in testing. Ask that same question the end of third quarter of this year, and I hope the answer is yes. <clears throat> Back up for the telephone that we have. That's through AT&T, I believe. Is that gone? We no longer pay extra for that, or the question is cellular. Sorry, cellular backup or battery backup? There's a big difference. <laughs> in, in other words, it's a cellular thing. If they call no. the phone, if they the, call cell, the, the question is for your alarm system, correct? Yeah. Okay. Several people have put in a GSM cellular tower in their attic to automatically call the alarm company in case something happens with the phone line. That's a personal expense. That will not go away. This will not impact it. It will still work, especially if you port your phone number, because then the alarm panel knows that phone number. What happens a lot of times, and we learned this the hard way with Uverse, is that people change phone numbers, and the alarm panel had 49, and their new number was 32, and they weren't talking. So if you have the same phone number, your GSM cell backup should work. My argument, and you can talk to the security committee, is it's a friggin' waste of money. There's no value in it. If you're out of the house, it's taking the cops three hours to get to you anyway. Why do you really care? Supposedly it was just in case your phone lines. Right, they just yanked you for 40 bucks a month, but it's your choice. Steven. Uh, great presentation again, Jason. Um, I've got a couple of questions. The we first one, we've got to be fair. Just make it quick, we've got to be fair. The, my, fir my first question is, do you know or can, does Karen or anyone else know, did we receive the $141,000 payment from Comcast? Yes, it's already in the bank and it's in my name, thank you. No. <laughs> do you not remember the first presentation I gave where Carol said, how do you know you're choosing Comcast? And I said, because they wrote the check out to me and David. Thank you. My, Go ahead, let me finish. My, my second question, Mark referred to the cleanup of the dirt that they've been throwing around 
Um, um, is that going to happen now, or we're going to wait till the end of uh, the install? For, I'm on venture, as, as you question. know. They threw the dirt on the curb trees, on top of the mulch, yeah. on the box, on the, in the shrubbery beds. I mean, how is that going to be handled? That's a very good question. Steve's asking about, remember I thank you all for letting me know at the beginning that there are potential landscaping issues. Mark has met with the supervisor. It is my expectation, and you can call Mark or me or Larry. And I'm expecting that to be fixed in the next two weeks, thank not you. to the end of the infrastructure. And I'm also hoping, well look, I'm also going to take it this way. If they dig up something in front of the tower and they build it back and they throw the grass back down next to it, Guys, let's get serious. From the subtropics, give the friggin' grass two weeks and it'll grow together. But if they did what Steve's talking about, where they literally took the dirt out of the ground and threw it on top of somebody's mulch, trees, and flowers, that's inappropriate and they're going to fix it. And we're not having them wait till the end of October to do that. That's just wrong. Okay. So that's the end. And my, my final question um, you referred to the 10 foot utility easement. Now I checked my survey. That 10 foot utility easement runs parallel to the sidewalk and it goes in 10 feet. So my concern is that the pedestal or monument, as you call it, yes, it's within the 10 foot utility easement, but my, the existing uh, tower is over on the side of my house near the driveway and they put this one sort of in the middle of the yard between myself and my neighbor. Why, why couldn't it be moved to the left or the right and not be in the middle of the yard? His question is, why did they put it where they put it? The answer is because they're engineers and they spent months laying out a plan because, because the concept of the four houses. So depending upon how far you are from something, whether there's an underground conduit going to the inside of the street or the outside of the street determines where they had to put a tower. So some towers are put, or pedestals are put where they need to be, because now they're going to drill a conduit underneath the street so they can connect to the inside circle or the outside circle. And in your case, because you're in between the two side yards, you have a left side driveway, and then the other house has the, left side, the right side driveway, and the other house has the left side driveway. They put yours right in the middle of the easement between the two houses. There's a hundred boxes currently in this community, or 50, or 40, that are in the exact same spot they put yours, and I put up three pictures to show that. Yeah, I, I did see some of those pictures. I still believe there, there could have been, a, and there still could be a way to not have the tower. Jason, it wouldn't make any difference if it was 10 feet to the left. Still in the middle of the easement, but not in the middle of the lawn. But, but Stevie, I'm going to cut you short on this. I agree with you. But if we had them go to 700 houses, and they said, oh, Merle, where do you want yours, Merle? I want mine right over there. You know that guy who's got the piece of shit by his driveway that's one foot over? I want to make sure that he doesn't have a pedestal. But I don't have any control over that. So that would be a disaster. Now, Jason, that's a gratuitous response. I know, Number one, there were not seven. You yourself have said it's four to one. More so, or less, right. And, and of those 175, most of them are not in the middle. Most of them are okay. There's only an occasional one in the middle. So I don't think it's so difficult to, to approach a homeowner and say, you know, we were looking at this spot. You're, you're talking about a few dozen. 900s that would fall in that spot that is very unesthetic and unappealing. And I do believe that those of us who have that pedestal in the wall now, or will, or will find the property value seriously devalued. It did not work that way before. I don't know if I'm going to have a box either, but what I can tell you is when I did all my bike riding 
and it was great. My kids had told me how many miles I did. It's seven and a half miles of city bus to do all the spots. So what? What do you mean, so what? You don't even walk. Um, for about ten dollars, you can put a couple of shrubs like a couple other people did, and you can get rid of it because the box is not that hot. I understand that it wasn't there, and it's the first time you're looking at it. Marsha, don't go away a minute, please. Marsha and Larry have an unfortunate, and I went by their house. I went by their house, and unfortunately, my picture got lost of your house. Where are the collector's items here? So they have, they have, I wish I had, I wish I had their picture. On the left side, they have three mailboxes. To the next to the mailbox, they have an electrical tower box. To the next to the electrical box, they have a, a fp &L pole. To the right of their house, they have an AT&T tower, and they have their Comcast tower. I'm kind of hoping you don't get a Comcast tower, just out of here. But, they're very, but that's the other thing I wanted to show you in the pictures. Did you know, how many of you have a bayfront window? Makes a difference. Why? If you have a bayfront window, and you have a smaller signature house, your yard pushes closer to the street. So therefore, your landscaping comes a little further towards the street. So any appliance that they put there sort of looks more sheltered. If you have what some people have, that I showed you in the pictures, a more open common area, the pedestal itself stands out. It only stands out because this is June 3rd, or whatever it is, and we're looking at it. You know, two months from now, and I guarantee you, you guys ride around Vetra, and you notice the difference between Vetra and go on my circle, Barcelona, which is identical to Vetra. And you will see the difference between the old towers and every other house, bent over, struck, looking like crap, or every four houses on Vetra where they're clean and stable. And yes, I feel your issue, but I'm seriously telling you, for 10 bucks, you can landscape around it once they're done. But I will ask the question. I'm pretty sure I can't get it moved, but I will ask. What color are they? How big? What is that AT&T So you're saying those the thing they're not being taken out. The cylindrical towers are not being taken out. Those are AT&T. You're just getting a new one, but an additional If you're getting one. Remember, every box is being pulled out. Every Comcast box is being removed. Yes, one is AT&T and one is Comcast. No, they don't touch AT&T. No, what I would do is call AT&T and tell them it's ever, you know, that. we'll find out. But my guess is they're not going to touch it. Let, you could call AT&T and ask. I'm sure the whole community has tilted boxes. you know who knocked the boxes over? Gardens. Gardens. I know. What about cell phone service? Yeah, that's part of the standards thing, as I said, if you landscape it, be careful, because if they need to do service, it's going to get yanked. Larry, want to say something? Yeah. A number of people have told, or told me, I should say, that the, the evenness of the, the plate that the box sits on and the tower or monument, whatever you want to call it, is higher up from the grade than it used to be, or with the old boxes. And the reason is because when you dig, dirt has, will settle after it sits for a while. So you don't want it flat when they have to just dug it up and put it in, because it'll sink. It'll be below grade. So anybody who complains that they're above grade, stop complaining, because you've been done a favor. There's a question over here. Go ahead. Yeah. What about cell phone service? I don't mean to be impolite, but what do you mean, what about cell phone service? Well, they offer cell phone service. Yeah, but that's a pure retail thing, and they're offering I will tell you personally, having done all this for years, I would not be the first one to sign up for Comcast cell service. <laughs> I would take Verizon or Sprint or T-Mobile or AT&T before I'd ever take Comcast cell service. But I do want to say one other thing, and then I'll let you go. Jason, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. The Wi-Fi is in the house have two antennas. You're going to find this very interesting. How many of you typically have guests come over, kids, grandkids, 
something else, and they want to access your Wi-Fi, and you have to give them your passcode. The new gateways are split. They have a public side and a private side. So when your guests come in, they have to have a Comcast account. That's true. They have to have a Comcast account. But, but if they do, they can access the guest side without accessing your proprietary side. Norman Bruins of Black, Edgar White Sheriff of Jason. Thank you for a wonderful explanation. Great job. When I first moved in here, Jason, in the middle of my driveway, in the middle of my driveway was an FPL power box. They told me it can't be moved. I said, yes, it can be, and if I was wrong, I would know it. They moved it, it cost 4000 bucks. Uh, getting back to these towers, I think one of the problems is the Sorry? They're actually called The pedestal towers, okay? Uh, a big thing is perception. When the board decided to put up mailboxes in the front of the clubhouse, the population could see it. There was no surprise. If these boxes or one of them was put in front of the clubhouse for the residents to see, it would be no surprise. It might have reduced all the problems or all the complaints we have. The same is going to happen with the shutters. If one is put out so we can see it, people aren't going to complain that it's a nursing home or whatnot when they see it all. It's a, it's a very good suggestion. We didn't even think about it, but if you want to see one, go to Vedra and Isabella. <laughs> all right, in all fairness, my time is up, but let me go through the room. Anybody else have a question on this topic before we say thank you for attending our once a month meeting? And remember, all this stuff will be on the website.